There's a, a myth out there that people wish was true that, you know, like, oh, a balanced life, a balanced life. And I'm like, a balanced well, life is something you could choose to have after you accomplished a lot of other things. Have you ever seen a balanced life? It's, I'm not even interested to look for yeah, one. Yeah, I don't think it exists, first of all. If somebody has Pretty it, flatlined. If somebody really? has it, nobody's paying attention because the person's doing not much. The video you're about to watch is just a small segment from a much longer and more in-depth interview that's included inside my new digital program, The Ten Commandments of Wealth. Click that link and get your name on the Ten Commandments of Wealth Early Action Guest List. When you do, you'll secure your invitation to a private and live webcast discussion with me. And you'll also become eligible to get your copy of the Ten Commandments of Wealth 10 days early. Click that link, get your ass on the webcast, I'll see you inside. Today I get to chat with Carrie Lee Walsh Jennings. And she's a fantastic athlete. She's, I think, underrated. And I watched your stuff. I was, I'm not a fan of anybody except my very close people. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just, you know, fan is like the word root of like fanatic. Yeah. And which is yeah. like creepy by nature. Yeah. But, but I cheered for you. I watched your stuff in 2012. Yeah. We watched you in 2016. I cheered for you. I'm like, yeah, I hit the fucking ball. Fuck okay. yeah. And I seen a different interview that you did that I wanted to get a sense of your personality because I always watched your athleticism, you know? Oh, yeah. And I saw this other interview and I'm just like, well, you know, I hope she's not too goody two shoes or she finds me offensive in some way. Oh. And I don't really trust anybody that doesn't curse. Oh. And I, I saw you say the F word at least once, maybe more. <laughs> at least once. And then I thought, oh, we're going to get along great. Because <laughs> my grandmother was like the most saintly woman that I ever met. And she too used, not that word, but she used okay. numerous words. And I, like I kind of don't people. trust somebody that doesn't curse at least a little bit. They say we're more honest. I think it's true. I do too. I think it's true. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. And, um, four gold medals. Well... Well, you got 70 or something medals on three your... Three gold medals in the Olympics, but maybe that was just foreshadowing because I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go for Paris in 2024, and if I'm going, I'm That's going to... That's what I said, four I'm gold going... medals. I was right the first time. Hysteric. As usual. You were, excuse me. All right, uh, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> one bronze. Uh, yeah. That bothered you. It, it still does, but it's for a purpose. It fuels me. Yeah? You know? yeah truly. No, I, I'm not enough of an athlete. I, I have a lot of friends that are athletes. I have some acquaintances that are athletes. But when I, I look at your Wikipedia roster, and there's like <laughs> 70 more medals of like, you know, like 40-something yeah. gold and then a couple other ones. Yeah, right. And so this is, these are, you know, tournaments or major tournaments? Yeah, so I've been on the international tour for 20 years. On the domestic tour, I left that tour in 2016 because I thought they were treating the athletes like crap and sport like crap. So I left... So I've just been focused on the international scene. So yeah, international volleyball. Wow. That's my jam. So, 70 medals. That's 70 Only 70? So I guess in America they Maybe don't give medals. More. Way more tournament wins than 70. Wikipedia I would like three, needs to be updated. Well, and Wikipedia says my husband's a pro wrestler, and he's not. So. I've got a Wikipedia, but it's pretty thin and faint as well. So. No, it's been a good run. I think that's why there's so many medals. But I'm not done yet, I don't, I don't think. The reason I asked you to chat with me, um, a lot of my clients, they're all business nerds. They're people that want to do better. You know, They come to me for financial help, understand better. I don't manage anybody's money. Nobody gives me their money to manage it, something like that. I don't uh, sell them Ponzi scheme bullshit in the background, nothing like that. Yeah. But they ask me for help to, to understand better, like you know, educational type things like, you know, how do I start a business? How does mm -hmm. entrepreneurship work? Um, how do I understand the stock market? How do I learn to invest in real estate? And my normal client is somebody that's, uh, they're, they're already an overachiever at something. They're yeah. already very good at something. Most of them went to college. Uh, the ones that didn't, they're you know, an athlete or a musician or they're, they're a high level performer okay. at something, you know? Mm -hmm. I kind of don't want to work with people that aren't that way. Sure. Kinda, you know, yeah, speak the same language. If, yeah, yeah, you know what? Exactly. If somebody's already good at something, it's easy to teach them to be good at something else. They, they yeah. already have a work ethic, they already have some discipline, they already they know what it takes to, to earn their way at something. Absolutely. And you know, somebody that made it to their 30s and 40s and didn't do anything yet, like, yeah. bless their hearts, but I'm not the right person for them to work with. Sure. You know? Sure. I wish them well. They but, can grow into you. But not with me. <laughs> As they go. <laughs> so I, I loved, I had a lot of people that um, I've chatted with recently, some professional fighters and some NFL Super Bowl winners and well, all champions. That's a consistent theme. Yeah. So we're kind of talking about championship and what it takes to, right. to be a top performer. And uh, the, you know the lifestyle necessary to perform at that level, to to be at the top of your game, yeah. whatever that game might be. And it's, to my knowledge, I'm not a volleyball historian, but I don't think there's been a, a, a better performer in the history of volleyball. Like, you're the one. Well, man, they say it's arguable. I don't like the part that the arguable is 
in the conversation. No, so, not everybody can be right all the time, so gosh, that, you know, when true. they're wrong. No, well, and my point is that I feel like I still have more room to grow, so that fire, you know, fires me up. Um, but there's some pretty incredible people that came before me. My partner, Misty May, who I won three gold medals with, incredible. Karch Karai, if you don't know volleyball, you don't know him, but he's like Michael Jordan in our sport. Um, and he has the all-time winningest uh, wins record. Hmm. And before I retire, I would love to surpass that. Because being the winning is, is, is the dopest. You won like you know? 120 sets know, in a row, yeah? You, we did, yeah. And that was magical with Misty. But, but yeah, so it's, um, I love my job. It's, it's really given me a beautiful life. It's taught me a lot about myself. I've been around a lot of champions because of it. And kind of like what you just said, those are my people. Like I resonate. I feel like everything in life is energy. And I'm just really like attracted to people who have the energy of, of I'm going to get shit done. Like yeah. whatever's in front of me, I recognize it. Some part of me chose it and I'm gonna go through it and learn from it and make it work for me type of thing. What, what are some of the habits or lifestyle attributes that have to go with that? The, the decisions you have to make you know, long ago today, when I, when I say habits or lifestyle attributes, I'm saying that those are decisions you would have made a long time ago yeah. that are, have become habitual that, you know, no, if I'm gonna be a top performer at something, I have to do this, this, and this, and never these things. Sure, um, well I think, I think everything, like it just says, energy and mindset. So I was raised in a very optimistic family, like almost like too much, where everything's always gonna work out. Like I suffered, my family suffered a lot of death, a lot of loss early on in my life, but faith was always ginormous. And I feel like when, you have a, when you're a person of faith or if you have some bigger picture in your life, you just feel grounded. Like the world could be ending, but for me, I know whose hands I'm in. I know I was divinely built. I'm capable of living through hell and turning it into heaven. That's like my mindset on the court, off the court in my marriage, my relationships and business. Um, I just feel like everything is there to serve me. And I feel like that attitude is one of the essential things to be successful in life, right? Because you cannot be a, be a victim ever. One of my favorite quotes is, you cannot be a victim and a master at the same time. There was no victims in my household growing up. And I like, it was a lot of tough love. There was so much unconditional love, but not a lot of nurturing. And mm -hmm. so I feel like I just kind of fumbled through life, figuring out who I was by making mistakes, by being courageous enough to go and try new shit, because I knew I was always loved. I'd be you know, whipped if I fucked up, but I was always loved. And that's a bit dramatic. Um, but my parents always encouraged me greatly. Um, they believed in me. They helped me develop a belief in myself, um, even through failure. And I feel like, again, the mindset of optimism, of I can do this, and every failure, every win is just a rep towards something that you're working toward, you know? I, I, I want to contrast this, and I don't mean this to be jarring in any way. In my household, like, my dad wasn't there, and my mother beat my ass, often for no reason. Yeah. And there was a lot of, you know, like, filthy names and awfulness. Now, I still have this optimism. I still have this, yeah. this sense of, like, personal responsibility that mm -hmm. I'm like, um, in my head, it, you know, it's not, you know, Happy, happy, and, and sure. my and my head is like it's going to be a pile of shit unless I make it otherwise. I like that. And that kept me in a, in you know from a less pleasant mindset for a lot of years, yeah. and I'm more pleasant now than I used to be. You know, yeah. I wasn't always this cheery all the time. <laughs> but he's cheery. Don't let him fool you. I'm equally cheery and grumpy at the <laughs> same time. So everyone that knows me well knows that about me. <laughs> well, you're honest. A little equally That's cheery good. and grumpy That's always, good. but very very even in my temperament That's consistently. Huge. That's but, a skill. I always thought, you know, is I, I was kind of in charge. I wasn't kind of. I was in charge in the house by the time I was about ten, and um, that put a, a thought in my head. Is like, well, you know, nothing's going to happen for me if I don't go make it happen. I have to go make things happen. So yeah. that, that gave me like a deep sense, uh, which is a gift in many ways. So you don't mm -hmm. enjoy it at the time, but it made no. my life a hell of a lot better later. You know. Yeah. But but really a deep sense of like personal responsibility. Like anything that I want in my life, it's. You know, nobody's more responsible for my outcomes than me. 100%. And then later in my life, uh, you know, because, and then, and then I did this, you know, kind of grumpy, I'd get things done, but I was, yes. you know, kind of feeling gloomy inside. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, well, who the hell's responsible for my inner emotions? Yeah. And I, then I changed that, you know, I, or I added an addendum, if you will, that mm -hmm. nobody's more responsible for my emotions than I am. Totally. And then when I put those two things together, that, you know, you're responsible for your own damn outcomes, you're responsible for your own emotions, that, that really took a lot of, you know, negative, a lot of the gloomy went away. That's ownership. That's beautiful. And That's it, mastery. It made me a lot cheerier that, like, 
Yeah, I know I'm going to go, if I set a goal, i got to be careful with what goals I set because I'm kind of obsessive, sure. like a lot mm -hmm. of people are, the, a lot of top performers. You have to be yes, obsessive at you your thing, you know? Selective, huh? Yes, yeah, so you have to be selective what I focus on. Mm -hmm. But if I do that, I've always done very well at it. doesn't mean I'd be good at everything. I wouldn't be good at everything. Yeah, sure. But I was good at picking things that I could excel at and good at focusing on them and made sure that I really hit the target on the mm -hmm. things that I did focus on. And that, that helped take a lot of pressure off that um, I, I didn't get distracted with a lot of things. I think there's, yeah. there's a lot uh, of... Um, there's, a, there's a, a, a myth out there that people wish was true that, you know, like, oh, a balanced life, a balanced life. And I'm like, fuck that. A balanced well, life is something you could choose to have after you accomplished a lot of other things. Have you ever seen a balanced life? It's, I'm not even interested to look for yeah, one. Yeah, I don't think it exists, first of all. If somebody has Pretty it, flatlined. If somebody <laughs> has it, nobody's paying attention because the person's doing not much. They're, yeah. They're petting their puppy. They're kind of gray. They're playing with a video game, have a few drinks. Yeah. I don't think they're accomplishing much. Yeah. Well, I think I think the concept of balance, obviously so many things in theory sound amazing. <laughs> and I think in theory that sounds pretty rad like I'm I'm equally, you know, obsessed about my career and in love with that and I'm equally, you know, spending time and obsessed with my family like you know, but if you were to look at my life and probably your life as well, it's like work the work life balance is like this, right? And for me work is way up here. Mm -hmm. Where in my heart and my knowing my my true love is here, right? Like my my family is everything to me and yet the time spent is way more work oriented. And so for me, it's like the antidote to all of that is just if you can manage to be present, that makes the hour compared to three hours with my you know, work, hours with my family, it feels like three hours. I was living on my coach's uh, living room on a mattress, you know. I ended up like just bouncing at a bar. I'd been a cop, I quit my job. And... Derek Moneyberg presents The Ten Commandments of Wealth. Took, took the gamble on myself to become a successful uh, professional fighter and make it to the UFC or pride and at the time. And am I making a sacrifice right now or am I just in investing in a better future? So it's easier for me to do those, to make those decisions when I think about it is like, oh. Yeah, absolutely. I, and, I, and now that you mention it, having to actually really process and think about it. I think that word sacrifice is kind of like, I believe it's the word that the ones at the top kind of use to make everyone else feel better about it. Because when you're at the top, now you realize that that was an investment. Was everything just golden and easy and handed to you, or do you have a little struggle yourself along the way? No. Yeah, within, uh, in 2013 and 2015, I was living out of my car, you know, full time, and I was too proud to ask for help. Like, how ridiculous is that? You're living out of your car, and you think you know it all. And 2015, that's when I kind of hit, I knew that I didn't know it all. So why not find experts in that and really shortcut that? I thought I was gonna just chip away. I thought I was just gonna read books till I was an expert. Mm -hmm. you know, I never really talked to anyone that actually did it. My entire net worth is up 25%. I've already seen a 300% rate of return. 5x my net worth. I'm up 200k. The 10x return on my investment. I know for a fact that without working with Derek, none of this would have ever happened. I make more money than I've ever made in my entire life. I owe that to Derek's advice. The idea of not taking this and not investing in yourself is insane. 